Hi and welcome to Rainy Dewey's Art Spot. My name is Lorraine, my nickname is Rainy, and you can call me Rainy. Um, today's video is all about practicing and allowing yourself to practice, um, especially when you're trying to tackle new subjects. Um, I recently made a decision to try to push myself in my art journey by trying new things. I wanted to do more difficult and complex uh, subjects and I wanted to tackle animals, um, animal portraits and people portraits. Um, over these many years that I've been painting, I've been leaning on doing landscapes mostly because they require less precision and are more forgiving than uh, portraits. In the beginning, I, um, very beginning, I tried lots of subjects and I was less fearful. Um, I even did a few charcoal uh, portraits of animals and people and somehow in the intervening years I, I became less adventurous and I began to play it safe so there are many reasons for that but in the end um, I became bored and stuck and so now that I have a little bit more time I want to try new things and so um, with some encouragement from one of my YouTube friends here uh, Becky um, I decided I would tackle uh, trying to do a portrait of my new dog, Tucker. So I jumped right in. Um, at first I started doing a watercolor sketch in my wet dry media sketchbook and uh, I was just using black and water. Um, as I proceeded a little further, instead of using black, I did um, start using indigo mixed with a burnt sienna, which seems to be a richer color. but. In the sketchbook I used black and water and I was doing the sketch while I was watching television I was hoping to just be relaxed and get a sense of you know placement for the eyes and the angle of the ears and so on and so forth and so I did um, the sketchbook um, piece and it was a dog but it wasn't Tucker um, but I learned a little bit from that and so then I decided I was going to move on and, and tackle this subject in on my good paper, on my watercolor paper. And this is what you see here. So I'm doing a sketch on arches, 140 pound cold press. Uh, I believe I'm using a 2H pencil, which is what I typically use. And I use that rubber eraser, which um, doesn't deface the paper. So. Um, I felt like I could sketch it right on the paper. You can see I'm making some adjustments. I'm trying to measure the angle against the photo reference that I'm using and um, you know trying to get placement right. Um, I think maybe his nose is a little too long and I would know that if I did a bonafide pencil drawing with all the shading and instead I skipped that really critical um, step and so hold on that's Tucker he wants to go outside hold on so I continue to try to make adjustments um, on the watercolor paper but it looks to me now and now that I've gone through all of the effort of trying to paint it among other things it looks like the eyes are too far apart and the nose is a bit too long so you'll see here I started using um, a mix of indigo and burnt sienna for the black mixing your own black by using indigo and burnt sienna or burnt umber um, actually makes a more interesting uh, dark black than if you used it directly from the tube. Another color that you can use to replace black is Payne's Gray. I know a lot of artists do that and don't have black um, paint on their palette at all. So once I got my sketch on the watercolor paper, um, I wet the whole thing and um, was going to <laughs> go ahead and try to get in just your light values and so this is all very wet I'm applying the paint you'll see that mixture 
you know, it looks bluish. That's the indigo. I grade it down by using the burnt sienna. And it's uh, pretty wet. I can see now I probably should have grayed it down maybe a little bit more, it, um, leading really strongly toward the blue. And there again, here I am. When I'm doing wet on wet, a lot of times I push myself and I add paint before um, I should. So when you're doing a wet on wet technique, there are lots of timing issues that are really important to uh, pay attention to. Um, when the paint, when the paper is very wet and there's a shine on it, you can see there's a shine on his on his ear, his left ear. Um, that means that the paper is very wet and if you add paint it's going to really burst and go every which way. You can see that happening as I put paint over the eye. Now if I waited a little bit um, you can see here on the ear it's not quite as wet and my pigment is pretty thick and so there's a little bit more, more control um, as to how far the paint will spread. On the jowl there, it was a little bit too wet, so um, what I wanted on dark underneath his jowl toward his chin is now burst onto his jowl. I didn't want that. There again, I'm moving too quickly. Um, I need to have patience when I'm doing that wet on wet technique. Um, and I do have a, I, I do have a tendency to push too quickly. So my advice to you is to keep your, keep your process slow, keep it, don't rush. Um, you saw, I, I don't know if you noticed, but on that one jowl where it, uh, the paint burst, I tried to lift it off. Um, and I could lift, it looks like I was able to lift a little bit off. Again, the ear up there, the left one that I'm working on, a little bit too wet. It's funny, you can learn a lot, honestly, by videotaping your process. And um, in a lot of cases, I can see where I should have stopped where I should have waited. And uh, even taking a photograph of your uh, work or leaving the room and walking away and coming back, you have a fresh eye and you can pick up um, inaccuracies in your painting or drawing by just walking away and coming back after, you know, uh, going to get a cup of coffee or something. So uh, I'm continuing to try to work it and well this is a spoiler alert I have I completely lost control of the whole mess right now it doesn't look so horrible you see that top part I dropped in some water I got a bloom and now we're starting to go off the rails a little bit um, uh, the other thing uh, that I had working against me is I was using an image that I had on my phone and so I'm trying to record this video with my phone and so what I should have done is um, ordered a hard copy or printed a, a good hard copy of my reference photo so I could have it right uh, in front of me. And I'm just trying to build, glazing. So I continued to try to work it. I let the whole paper dry completely so I could try to gain some control. And I never really gained control. Um, I didn't have a good sense of the shading on Tucker's face before I began and so eventually this watercolor effort just seemed to go completely off the rails and so I started adding charcoal 
to the watercolor sketch. Um, part of the reason that I did that is because, first of all, I didn't think I had anything to lose because it wasn't what I had hoped. And the other reason was I didn't feel like I could get the real black uh, value that I really needed that, um, that the charcoal could provide. Um, the texture of the watercolor paper, though, seemed to work against me. But I pushed on until I felt utterly defeated. Um, you can see here I'm still trying to salvage it, but um, at the end of the day, it really um, became a uh, just an exercise in frustration. And when you get to that stage with your artwork, that's when the rubber really hits the road. Um, the question becomes, will I quit and go back to my safety net of painting landscapes only? Or, or will I continue to try to practice and learn and push past this, um, what really could be considered a failure, but I'm not going to call it a failure. I'm going to call this practice. The truth is, I'm not the kind of an artist where everything comes easily. I need to practice and play and observe, and I need to allow myself to do so. In the early years, um, when I first began painting and drawing, I didn't allow myself the luxury to learn. I had this self-imposed pressure each time I sat down to be creative. I thought everything needed to be perfect the first time. And finally, I realized that every attempt need not be perfect, but that every attempt at a masterpiece, um, I each time I would learn something new. And I realize uh, that's where I am with my Tucker portrait. The images on this video are surely a dog, a black dog, a Labrador retriever, perhaps. But is it my dog, Tucker? Does it really look like Tucker? And I have to admit that the answer is no. And so what do I do next? I'm not going to consider this a failure because I've learned and what I've learned I will take forward because I intend to try again. So I suppose my point is that each time we try and we don't end up with what we'd hoped, it's not a loss. It's called practice. It's not called failure. There's no such thing as failure as long as we keep trying. And each time we try, we learn something new and our skills become stronger. Our technique will become stronger. I guess my point is, every time you pick up your brush or your pencil, we need to be kind to ourselves. We need to allow ourselves to practice and learn and know that if we don't end up with the product that we hope, that we're not gonna quit. <laughs> we're going to not quit together. So I wanted to thank you very much for watching if you did make it to the end of this uh, video. If you have any insights or comments, I would love to hear them. I do intend to tackle another um, attempt at drawing my dog Tucker, but this next time I intend to be more prepared. Um, I'm going to do my homework, I'm going to get myself a fine drawing to work from, and hopefully, hopefully. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up. 
if you have any comments or thoughts or insights that you'd like to share about your own art journey, I would love to hear them. Again, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like these, don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Happy painting.